So in this episode, we are going to be talking about Context API, which is a very nice way for you to share data between your React components, even if they're nested inside each other. And also, it's a very nice way to avoid something called prop drilling, which I'm going to show you in this video. So first of all, let's define a problem. So I'm going to create a new component and I'm just going to call it user. Okay, so we created the component called user and it's uh, receiving some props. Props are going to be called first name and last name. So let's say we wanna show that user in our application. We would go to our app and just add that user component. And of course, since this component is receiving some props, uh, we are going to define those props inside our global app component. Okay, so we are defining an object called user, which has properties of first name, last name, and John Doe. Okay, so we want to send those properties into our user component, and we can do that because we already defined the first name prop and last name prop, so we are just going to add it to our user component. Great, let's save this and check it out in the browser. Okay, so it says, my name is John Doe. Great, so this works as expected. Next thing I want to do is I want to show you what is prop drilling. So let's say, for example, that we have another component and I'm going to create that component just below the user. I'm going to call that component card. So we want to show some user in some card component, which is going to be part of our UI. So as you can see, we want to display the user inside of our card component but user needs to receive some props, so first name and last name. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to put this here, right? So first name and last name, except in this case, instead of user, we are receiving our first name and last name from the props of the card component. So what this means is if we wanna put the card into our app component, then we need to also define uh, the, those first name and last name props for our card component. Even if, even if the card component actually doesn't need first name and last name to do anything. So I'm going to go into my app and then I'm just going to rename the user component into our card component and check if this works. So now what we are doing, we are sending the first name and last name to the Carter's props, and then we are using those props to fill out our user's first name and last name. If I save this, I check it out in the browser. Okay, so we are still getting my name is John Doe. So let's make another example. Let's add another intermediary component. So we are going to call this component card wrapper. So this card wrapper also receives props and then it's sending those props to the card and then the card is sending those props to the user and then we are displaying that data. So the first name and the last name. Of course, now we have to change uh, this card to be card wrapper. Let's just check this out in the browser. Still works. But as you can see, we are having to define props for our components which don't actually need them. So the only component that needs props first name and last name is this user component. But since the user component is nested inside the card wrapper and card components, we need to pass the, that data to our user component. So this is called prop drilling, right? So you are sending from the highest component, you are sending the data from the highest component to the lowest component. This is a pattern that you will get used to in, to in React. So if you're having just maybe two components that need the, that prop drilling, that's okay. You can imagine that this could be nested into five, six, ten components and then you would need to send uh, that prop through five or six or 10 components. So that can get very unwieldy very fast. So now I'm going to show you how you can use Context API, which comes out of the box with React 
to avoid this so that you can send your data through just one component and uh, all of your components can consume that data. So first of all, we need to define our context. And to do that, you just do something like this. In real world applications, this would probably be in a separate file, but for now we are just creating everything in one file. So we first define our app context. You can call this however you like, because for now, for us, this is going to be the context of our app. Nice thing about context API is that you don't have to make that context for the whole of your app. Maybe you just need uh, to share the data between two or three components, then you would create context for just those two, two or three components. For now, we are just creating it for our whole app. Uh, so you can use your context API to be some kind of global state for the app if you really want to, but uh, also you can use it to just be the state for maybe two, three, five components that actually need that state. So we first of all define our context. We are calling it app context. As I said, you can call it whatever you like. Next thing we need to do, we need to define a wrapper for our context, right? So in our case, it's going to be the wrapper around the whole app, but uh, you can wrap it, you can define that wrapper to be wrapped just around few components, as you will see. Okay, so to define that wrapper, the wrapper is just a normal functional component. So I'm calling it context wrapper, but you can also call it whatever you like. So in, that, in this functional component, the only difference is, is we are going to call in it something called context provider. And in our case, it's going to be the context provider for the app context that we created. And that app context provider is going to receive props children. What that means is uh, when we wrap our components with this context provider, uh, the children are just going to be those components. So now, instead of defining our user in our app component, we are going to define it in our context wrapper component, and we are going to send it uh, through app context provider via value property. And you are sending it as an object. So we are sending object with the user object in it. So what we need to do next is we need to go to our app and I'm just going to delete the user because we are getting it, getting it from the context wrapper. And also I'm going to delete these props and our card wrapper. And now we can go to uh, our other components and also delete those props from there. So we don't need those props for our uh, card component we also don't need them even for the user component. But to access the user's name and last name, we are going to have to change a little bit of our user component. So to access the user from our context wrapper, the only thing we need to do is we need to use uh, the hook, of course, uh, called use context. And we also need to define what context are we using. So we are going to get the user, which we are sending from uh, here. So value user, we are getting that. And we are defining that we want to use the context called app context. And now instead of props first name and props last name, we can just say user first name and user last name. Okay, so we save this, check it out in the browser. Let me just warn you, this will not work because we didn't do one more step, which is probably the most important step. And as you can see, we are getting the error, cannot read property user of null. Now, why, why is this happening? Well, because we created this context wrapper right here, but we still didn't wrap any components in it. So, what we need to do to correct this error is we need to wrap card wrapper into our context wrapper, like this. So we are getting the context wrapper and everything that is wrapped in this context wrapper, so it doesn't have to be just one component, it can be many components. All of those components are going to have the access to whatever data we define in our context wrapper right here. 
So let's just save this and check it out in the browser. As you can see, this now works again and it says my name is John Doe, even though we didn't even send one single prop. Okay, so let me just show you one more stupid example of this because I couldn't think of a better one. So what I want to do right now is I'm just going to add some elements to my user component and I want to toggle those elements and I want to show you how you can use context API to have something like a global state. So first of all, uh, I'm going to add an element with a div, just a div with some background, some height and width and so on. Okay, so I have this div with a height of 100, width of 100, background of white. And if I save it, check it out in the browser. As you can see, we are displaying that element. Now I wanna add a button to my component. And I'm just going to call that button toggle square. So I wanna toggle this square with this button. Now, of course, we can do all of that inside of this component, but since we are talking about context API, I want to show you how you can have a global state uh, with the use state hook and how you can send that state uh, through your context wrapper and through context API. So first of all, I'm just going to go to my uh, context wrapper. And in here, I'm just going to define a state. So just like you would do for any other component, we are defining the is visible, is visible variable, we are defining toggle visible method, and then we are just setting up our initial state to be true. Now, of course, we need to send this to our app context provider through the value property. And to do that, we just do something like great. Okay, save this and then we go to our user component. And now we are going to uh, say to our use context hook to also give us the is visible variable and toggle visible method. Okay, and now I'm just going to set this div to be visible uh, if the is visible is true, if it's false, it's going to hide. And also we are going to set our button to toggle that visibility on click. So with this, we are saying to show this div if visible is true, otherwise hide it. And now I'm just going to add a method to the button on click method, of course, to change that visibility, right? So as you can see, all of this is actually defined in our context wrapper. So this toggle visible method is coming from the context wrapper. So this, this way you can share the state of your components. And also, uh, like I showed you with the user, you can just share pure data with your components. So let's just test this out, save it, check it out in the browser. And if I click toggle square, this works right? Although nothing of that is defined in this user component. Okay, so that's context API for you in broad strokes. And actually, I think this is going to be the last episode in this series, because as I said at the beginning, this series is just supposed to be a primer for some React concepts uh, that we will be using in the next series I'm creating for you, which is going to be using Next.js and React. And we are going to be building a real world application. And when we come to those concepts, I can just refer you to one of these videos. So uh, anyway, remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.